Hi guys, this is Ms. Chris. We are going to do a video right here to review um, the major concepts for Chapter 13. So I went ahead and drew out the basic graph shape for a warming curve. And we're going to answer this first question. How much total energy is required to turn um, 8.2 grams of ice to steam at 108.5 degrees Celsius? So the first thing you need to do is label your graph. We're going to have, we're going to start off down here with 8.2 grams at 108, I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to give you the initial temperature, didn't I? Okay, we're going to, um, ice is going to be, we're going to start out at negative um, 7.2 degrees Celsius. So we got to, we have to have that first temperature. And I did not put that in the question, but it will definitely be in the, in the questions for the test. So negative 7.2 degrees is at the beginning temperature, negative 7.2 degrees Celsius. And then when we get up to this point, this is where water will melt. And so this is the zero degrees Celsius part, and this is the part where water will um, turn to steam. So that's 100 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to go all the way up to 108 degrees Celsius, and you know, I. This is not to scale, but I'm just going to put 108.5 degrees up at the top. Okay, so you should be able to label the temperatures. This is the first temperature right there. And now we're going to, we need to remember things like this flat section is where you use the formula for the heat of fusion, the delta H of fusion. And here, this flat section, the latent lazy heat section, is where you use delta H of vaporization. And then all of all these diagonal areas, each one of them, you use Q equals MC delta T. Q equals MC delta T. And that's used for here and here as well. Q equals MC delta T. MC delta T. Okay, remember that the diagonal sections are called sensible heat because you can detect the temperature changes. And the flat sections are called latent heat, lazy heat. There's no temperature change. There's only a, a change in phase. If you go this way, you're, this is, we're adding in energy, energy in joules. So if you go this way, you're melting. And if you take the energy away, you're freezing it. And here on this latent heat, if you go this way, you're turning it into a gas. And if you go in the opposite way, you're condensing it. It's going back to a liquid. So you also need to remember what state of matter is it at each point. At this first state of matter, we have ice, solid, a solid ice. The second one, we still have ice, but ice now is zero degrees Celsius. And then we do the melting process, and on the other side, we have a liquid. So the liquid is now at zero degrees Celsius. Then we heat up the liquid, and on this side we have a liquid, but that liquid is now 100 degrees Celsius. It's right there, 100 degrees. And on this side, we turn that liquid into a gas. And now we just heat up the gas. So you need to know the states of matter for each point on the graph. And drawing the graph is going to be a point. I'm not going to look for a super, super detail, but I want, a, I want the basic shape. I want to know um, the temperatures and where all the Q values are coming from. So first we're going to calculate Q1. And that's in this first section. This is where you get Q1. All right, so Q1 is where we have an ice going to ice. So it's the same state of matter. We're just warming it up. And so we're going to use Q equals MC delta T. Remember that this M, this M is for mass. And mass is in grams. Another clue that you use this formula is you have a delta T. Remember that delta T, and I don't have this one on your reference sheet. Delta T is the T final minus the T initial. Um, I'm okay if you add it to your reference sheet at this point, but you should know this, this formula. The final temperature is the second temperature. So at this one section, you only look at the temperature change from the beginning of this section to the end of this section. So in this one section, the final temperature is zero, and the initial temperature is a negative 7.2. So we'll calculate M. The mass is 8.2 grams. And then we need the specific heat of ice, and I'll come back to that in a minute. And then we do delta T, which is T final minus T initial. 
So the final temperature, the first final temperature, I guess I'll put it over here. Um, delta T is going to be the final temperature 0 minus a negative 7.2. So it's going to be 7.2 degrees. A positive 7.2 because you're subtracting the negative. So we now need the specific heat. And since we're dealing with ice, we need the specific heat of the, of the solid. So we're going to go look at that chart. This is the reference chart you should have. And I also put it in the email to your parents so you can print it out if needed. But notice that here I have specific heats of three states of matter. This is what I want you to use, these three. I know the specific heat of water is listed down here. I use this one more for a comparison chart. Use this specific heat. If I ask you for a problem, that involves iron or gold or copper, you do need to look at these specific heat values. But for this complex thermodynamic question, that's what it's called. It's not that complex. It's just got a lot of steps. Use these three right here. So the specific heat of ice is 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay. So we're going to write that in. 2.05 joules per gram degree Celsius. You should notice that the grams cancel, the degrees Celsius cancels, and we end up with a value for specific heat. Okay, and that value is 21.032. We need two significant figures because 1, 2 right here. So 1, 2, so we're going to change that to 120 joules. So that's our first Q. All right, now we're going to do Q2. And Q2 is the second section of our graph. So Q1 went from there to there, Q2 goes from there to there. It's the amount of energy that I'm adding. Q is energy. So for Q2, there is no change in the temperature, so that would be a clue that Q equals MC delta T doesn't work. We need to use the fusion one. If you look at your reference chart again, here are the formulas. We used this one first, now we're using this one. So I kind of put them in order that we use them. So de moles is delta times delta H of fusion. All right, so moles times the delta H of fusion. That's what I have to use. And I don't know the moles of water. I know the mass. So I have to turn mass to moles and then I have to look up the delta H of fusion of water. That's on your reference chart. Here in table 3 there's the vaporization and the fusion. So for water it's 6.01 right there. That's what you have to use. 6.01 kilojoules per mole. You gotta use the units. Notice this is joules, this is kilojoules, they're not the same unit. Now I have to turn the grams into moles, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right down here. 8.2 grams of water, because ice is frozen water, but it's still water, and one mole, and we have to calculate the molar mass, so hydrogen is 2 times 1.01, .01, and oxygen is 1 times 16. We multiply and add together, we get 18.02 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of water. And so now we can figure out how many moles we have just by putting that into our calculator. And I have 0 0.455. And we only have two significant figures, so it's 0 0.46 moles. That's how many moles I need to put into this problem, 0 0.46 moles. So I used it there. I used it for Q2, for Q2. So now I just have to multiply. 0.46 and times uh, 6.01 and I get 2.76 which is 2.8 2.8 kilojoules so that's my Q2 I meant to kind of put that in the green just so we can have some consistency alright now we're going to go to Q3 Q3 is in this next section where now we're heating up the liquid. So that's the Q3, this, the third amount of energy. And since we're doing a, delta, um, a heat change, a temperature change, we use Q equals MC delta T. The mass is still 8.2 grams. The temperature change now though is going to be T final minus T initial. Here, the final temperature for this, for this area right here, we have to compare those two. The final temperature is 100 minus zero, so it's just 100 degrees Celsius except for I need the, dec the decimal point. So that's the, T, that's the delta T right here, delta T. 
final minus initial. That was my T final and that was my T initial for that section. Now I need to look up, oh I put that in the C area. Let me move that over real quick. All right, over here, 100 degrees Celsius. I need to look up the specific heat now of water. So again, it's on your reference sheet, and here it is, 4.184, right here, 4.184. 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. All right, you can see there, I calculated it out, 3,400 joules, so that's Q3. All right, now we're going to do the second section, I mean, sorry, the fourth section in Q4. Um, notice that here, just so you notice, there's two significant figures, so I had to do two sig figs. So now we're at Q4. Again, there's no temperature change. The, the liquid is 100 degrees, and so is the gas. It's just a vaporization. So the formula is the moles times the delta H of vaporization. And again, that, that formula is on your reference sheet. And so now we already calculated out the moles. It's 0.46 moles. And we have to look up the delta H of vaporization. So there's the formula we just used. And here's water. And there's the delta H of vaporization under this one, 40.7. So 40.7 kilojoules per mole. The moles cancel. Again, I'm canceling all the, I wasn't canceling all the units, but they cancel. You go all the way back and cancel them all. And it's 0.46 times um, 40.7, which is 18.7, and two significant figures. We have 19, 19 kilojoules. There's the Q4, 19 kilojoules. All right, so we're almost done. We have to go to the very last section and calculate Q5. And so notice that the total energy is going to be all these energies added up together because this is the amount of energy we're adding over time. So we're going to have um, five pieces, five steps, but then we add it all up to get the total energy. So Q5, again, we have a temperature change. We're going from this temperature to this one. So that's the final temperature, and that would be the initial temperature in this section right here. And so the final temperature is 108.5. So Q5 is MC delta T. The mass is still um, 8.2 grams. We have to look up the specific heat now of steam because we're at the, we just turned it all into gas. So we go to here. There's the, spe the specific heat for steam. 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. So 2.01 joules per gram degree Celsius. And we need our T final minus our T initial. So for here, it's, for this one, it's going to be 108.5 minus 100, which is just 8.5 degrees Celsius. Now it's 100.0, okay? So 8.5 degrees Celsius is my new delta T. So all of my temperature changes from the beginning to the end are only in the areas that are slanted, okay? So now we cancel out all of our units and multiply again to get all right, and I did that, and it's 140.09 or 140 joules because of two sig figs. And then we have one last Q. We're going to calculate the total energy, and that total energy is going to be from the beginning all the way to the very end. So we have to add all the Qs together, Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4 plus Q5. All right, so we write them all in. Q1 is 120 joules, Q2 is 2.8 kilojoules, Q3 is 3,400 joules, Q4 is 19 kilojoules, Q5 is 1,040, I'm sorry, 140 joules. But now, we can't add it together because we have joules and kilojoules and we have to, the units have to match. So I turn all the kilojoules to joules just because it's easy. Remember the 2.8 kilojoules, the conversion, there's 1,000 joules in one kilojoule. So that's 2.8, one, two, three spots. That's 2,800 kilojoules. I mean, sorry, 2,800 joules. So that turns to 2,800 joules. And 19 times 1,000, this turns into 19 
thousand joules. Now I can turn, add them all together, and um, talk about. All right, I got two thousand. I mean, five thousand four hundred sixty, and I have to look at significant figures. All right, remember when you're adding, you look at place value. This one goes to the tens place. This one goes to the hundreds place. Hundreds, thousands, tens. So this one is going to determine the significant figure because 9 in the 1,000s place is less significant than the 100s place or the 10s. So I can only go to the 1,000s, so I have to round this up to 25,000 joules. Okay. Now, if you had to write this in scientific notation for some reason, and you don't have to for here, um, all you have to do, you start off with the decimal place at the end, you move it 1, 2, 3, four places, and that would be 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. You can only have one number to the left of the decimal for scientific notation. Remember that. This answer is perfectly acceptable for this example problem. Sometimes you have to do scientific notation to correct for the, uh, the significant figures. Okay, this problem is worth eight points. So you, you can see why. There's a lot of work, and I need you to show me all the work so that I can give you partial credit if you miss pieces of it. Um, the key is to get the correct formulas, so please be careful about that. Now we're going to also do just some simple ones. If I said, um, I'm, let me write the question for you. All right, how many kilodoles of energy are required to turn 71.6 um, grams of ethanol from a liquid to a gas? All right, we'll have to go look that when you're turning from a liquid to a gas on the warming curve, you use the delta H of fusion. That's what this one, sorry, vaporization. A gas is a vapor. There's ethanol right there. So there's the, the formula 38.6. You're just going to turn, the energy is the, the moles times the delta H of vaporization. It's the same formula right here. We're only just doing one portion of the big problem here. But um, we do have to turn grams to moles. So C2H5OH is what I have. So ethanol is C2H5OH. So first we've got to turn mass to moles. We have 71.6 grams of C2H5OH. We have to do the molar mass. So carbon, there are two of them. Hydrogen, there are six of them. This one is a tricky one because there's one here five here rather and one there. So six, six hydrogens total. And then oxygen, there's only one. We multiply times 12.01, times 1.01 .01, and times 16. So that's 24.02, 6.06 6 and 16. We add these all up together to get, and that's 46.08. Um, joule, uh, grams per mole, so 46.08 grams. Now the mass cancels out and I can figure out, all right, and that would be 1.55 moles. There's only two, three sig figs, so three sig figs here. So I have to start off by turning the mass to moles. And so now I know Q, the, uh, the change in Q is equal to um, the moles times the delta H of vaporization because I'm turning it from a liquid to a gas. This is vaporization. So I go, I've got my moles, and I just go look up the delta H of vaporization for ethanol, which was um, 38.6 kilojoules per mole. And so 1.55 times 38.6 is 59.83, which is just three sig figs. So that, you, we gotta stop here, you look there. So it's just 59.8 um, kilojoules. That's the total amount of energy. You don't have to do a lot of steps. It's just, this is just basically looking at one step, one piece of the process, okay? Now, in the previous question, we already did a lot of Q equals MC delta T questions. and so I'm not going to redo these, but I could give you just one step of the process in a question as well. And the next thing I want to do is um, look at the heat of vaporization, I'm sorry, um, endo endothermic and exothermic reactions. So we have here like a re reaction, 
This is an endothermic because the, the, remember these are the products and these are the reactants. It's always the reactants are, are first, the products are second. And then the exothermic reaction is the opposite looking because these are the products and these are the reactants. And so our delta H is this, this area. This is where we calculate it. It's always the pro delta H is the sum of the heats of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. And we get all these heats of products and reactants from your reference chart. Okay? So if I have a reaction um, and I want to calculate it, I just have to take the products minus reactants. Now for this one, let's say my products here had 10 joules and my reactants had 40. On this one, I'll do the same two values. 10 joules and 40. Well, the delta H for this endothermic reaction would be products minus reactants. There's the products at the top, and its um, energy is 40, so it would be 40 minus 10, which is a positive 30 joules, and that's endothermic. Well, over here, for the exothermic reaction, where we lose some of the heat, again, it would be products minus reactants. So in this case, the products are 10. 10 joules minus the reactants of 40 joules. So that's a negative 30 joules. So now, if the delta H is negative, you have exothermic. If the delta H is positive, you have an endothermic. You took in heat. You let go of heat. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna erase this and calculate one. Okay, I wrote a question up here. Find the enthalpy of reaction and tell if the reaction is endothermic or exothermic. And that sounds all, sounds all complicated, but we know this it isn't. This really isn't. Enthalpy means just the delta H, H for heat. So we're trying to find the heat of this reaction. And we're gonna tell if it's endothermic, meaning it gains ener energy like this one, endothermic, or exothermic. So we, I wrote a, um, um, this is a two, it's hard to read that. I wrote a reaction down. So in order to do this, we need to find the delta H's of formation off your reference chart and, and then do the calculation. Now, you may have to use the big one for this one. So here's the big chart I gave you. I also sent it to your parents for printing out. All right, so the first thing we needed is um, NO2 gas. And there's NO2 gas. We need the delta H of formation, which is 33.2. So 33.2, I always write them underneath. And um, water, let's find water, liquid water. And I'm just showing you this chart to just help you understand how to use it more. So let's see, uh, liquid water, it's in alphabetical order. There's, okay, water, liquid water, negative 285.8, because that's the first column is delta H. Negative 285.8. All right, then I'll find the rest of these and put All right, there's the rest of the values. Notice I wrote the units over here. All of them have kilojoules per mole. Now, if you look at your reference sheet again, you'll be able to find at the top the rig, the smaller reference sheet. You can find the uh, formula right there. The heat of the reaction, and that's what I'm asking for. Enthalpy is heat of reaction, is equal to the heat of the, um, the sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. Okay, so delta H of reaction equals the um, sorry delta H of reaction equals the the sum of the heat of the products minus the sum of the heat of the reactants. Now we always remember that the product side is over here, products. The products always come second. This is the reactant side. It's like you read left to right. Reactants go to products. Same thing on this chart down below. The reactants are first and then the products are second. The reactants are first and the products are second. As you go from left to right, as you add in energy, or this one, in this case, it's just adding in time because the energy is on the side. Left to right, so products is our, the products are on this side. And so we have two moles of this first one. So two moles times a negative 174.1 kilojoules per mole plus one mole times 91.3 
kilojoules per mole. So that's the product side minus the reactant side. 3 moles times 33.2 kilojoules per mole. And um, just pointing these out, there's the 3. The 1 is not is assumed. That's what this one is. That 1 is assumed. We have a 1 right here as well. That's assumed because in math you don't have to write them. So 1 mole times a negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. So that's the product side and the reactant side. And now we just have to solve the products and the reactants and then subtract the two according to the formula right here. So I'm going to do that. All right, so the pro um, product side is a negative 256.9 kilojoules. Notice I canceled out the moles for each part. Remember, this one mole is this one mole right here. I'm oh, sorry, over here, because it's products minus reactants. Um, this one mole is this one mole here. Like that. Okay? Products minus reactants, second minus first. So now we got to just do the math and get the final answer. Don't forget that you can subtract a negative. It's like adding a positive. So negative 256.9 minus a negative 186.2 is a negative 70.7 kilojoules. So the delta H for this reaction is a negative 70.7 kilojoules. So there's the answer. Is it endothermic or exothermic? Well, look down here. When a delta H is negative, you have an exothermic reaction. The products are going to be lower than the reactants. So this is an exothermic reaction. Now you could have an endothermic reaction too. Now if it's exothermic, and this is something that, um, I'm going to erase this section over here and you'll see why, something that was missed a little bit. An exothermic reaction has a negative delta H, but that doesn't mean you put it negatively into the reaction. If I ask you to write the heat into the reaction, this negative sign tells you to write it over here because that heat is produced or created or let go of. So this, you write it as a positive 70.7, not because, um, because it, it, if you write it on either side, you're going to be putting a positive. It's just that on this side, on the product side of the reaction, the left side, I'm sorry, the right side, we created this energy. It left these two things. These two reactants lost this energy, but this energy was created by them. So this is where you write it in as a positive. So if it's written over here, it's a positive amount over here. That means if it's on the product side, it's exothermic. So that the total change in the reaction is negative. So that reactants started out high and they lost this energy. They lost from here to here. They lost 70.7 kilojoules. The products of H, NO3, and NO have less energy than the reactants of NO and NO2 rather and um, water at the top. This energy used to be inside here, but when we create the products, this extra energy leaves. So the change, the products minus reactive, is negative, but you write it in on the product side. Now, if the delta H was a positive, you write it in. If the delta H of a reaction is positive, 60.7 or something, you write that in on the reactant side. You would write positive delta H's on the reactant side. Negative delta H's on the product side. Okay? They go on the product side. But they're both written as positives. So this was kind of a tricky question on the quiz that um, has been missed in the past. So I'm hoping that you'll get that right. Okay, that's where I'm going to end. Honors will have additional um, computations they need to review, which is the delta S and the delta G. And I'm not going to review those in this video. So you can um, look at the videos that you've done before. Don't forget to study the terms. Study your notes. Everything I ask in the test is in your notes. There's nothing new in the test. So study your notes. Know all the vocabulary. Know what the terms mean. And that includes... Um, 
the heat of formation, creating things, the heat of the reaction, which is what we calculated up here. Um, the, um, oh, I can't even think what Hess's law is. Sensible heat, latent heat, uh, moles uh, of vaporization and molar moles of um, fusion. All those terms are in your notes. Make sure you understand them. Okay, I'll see you soon.